so uh, in this episode um, we're basically putting together the control system that we started on uh, in the uh, previous episode. So I went to Bunnings and bought a bit of 6 mil gal oil thread because I was uh, yeah, waiting for the apprentice at work to put the threads on my 6 mil stainless rod and I wanted to get the um, sort of all the little supports and guides and stuff epoxy into the boat so that when the uh, real push rods were finished I could just put them in. So here I'm basically just uh, sort of dry fitting everything and checking that the concept uh, works at all. Uh, at this point I still wasn't sure if this whole uh, lever system to get around the mast stump was actually going to work. Um, so it was definitely a relief um, in the part coming up where I was able to get it to work with all thread which is grippy as and uh, yeah it doesn't really want to slide around. Um, it obviously worked a little bit better because at this point the fair leaves uh, sort of running through the front of the cockpit there weren't actually laminated in so they were just moving with the thread but uh, I could see that it was going to work and uh, yeah that was a big relief after all this work. So as you might remember, at the end of the last episode, I um, put one more coat of epoxy with fairing powder in it, um, sort of over the top of this bowsprit socket because I wasn't happy with how it looked. And then I uh, quickly finished it off uh, with some sandpaper and my $39 multi-tool, and then just hit it with one of these foam sanding pads that I got from Bunnings. And uh, yeah, it came up nice and smooth for painting. So um, for the painting, I uh, ended up just going to Bunnings and getting uh, one of the cheaper cans of black spray paint they had. Uh, if I was doing it properly, I should have yeah, gone to a chandlery and got some proper uh, like an all glass two pack or whatever. And I'd definitely do that if I was doing the whole boat. But considering I was just painting a little bit at the front and uh, I don't have a spray booth or a spray gun or a shed or any gear at all and I'm just trying to do the whole project with basically stuff I can get uh, at the Bunnings sort of at the end of our street. Uh, I thought that'll do. So unfortunately the sticker from uh, when this boat uh, did the welds in Sorrento in 2015 uh, when it was brand new, um, it was sort of getting pretty worn out at the front there, you can see where it sits in the trolley. Uh, I thought I might be able to preserve it and uh, stick it on the mudguard of the trailer as a bit of uh, memorabilia of what the boat's done, but as you can see it just didn't want to stick and uh, at this stage I didn't have any spray glue that I uh, later bought um, to do the try and get some of the numbers to stick on the sail. But uh, yeah, I tried, but it just didn't want to stick, so it had to go in the bin. So yes, I uh, bought stickers to go on the boat uh, to promote the YouTube channel. 
and I know I'm not Nathan Adderidge or Peter Burling and I um, normally wouldn't have my name on the sail or the boat but sort of the theory with this is if you think about how many times you're sailing your moth and I reckon nearly every single time someone comes up to ask what is that thing uh, when you're de-rigging especially at some of these places I go to that aren't traditional sailing venues and then obviously these people just like you tell them it's a moth and then they walk off and they probably get home and they sort of YouTube like butterfly sailing or something because they'll get it wrong. So I thought if at least I put something on the boat that they can take a photo of, at least these people might be sort of captured into the sport because they'll go home and yeah, hopefully look up my channel and uh, yeah, see the videos and then maybe they'll subscribe and then maybe they'll go and do a sailing lesson or something. Unfortunately, this boat didn't come with any kind of real take-up system for the uh, van and tunnel and stuff. So I went on Amazon and I bought this uh, cheap eyelet tool. I actually got it for 46 bucks, not 52. And uh, that allowed me to just undo the lashing at the front of the tramp and then, uh, yeah, sort of slide this uh, tool on and uh, press some eyelets into it. Uh, they're definitely not stainless. They're like uh, probably the crappiest nickel-plated steel you can get. Uh, but I only did it as sort of an experiment to get the like layout of stuff right because uh, These tramps are definitely on their way out like you can see on the stitching all on that top edge is just almost non-existent um, But I'm hoping I'll be able to get a couple of months out of them and then yeah I'll use what I've learnt to get a proper set made up with uh, yeah proper stainless marine eyelets uh, sort of in the right places And then here I'm just uh, gluing in all those fair leads that you saw me make earlier for the push rod uh, so I just sort of mixed up some epoxy and then, uh, yeah, sat them on top of it. And uh, that's holding the bolts captive, so I should be able to remove the nuts in the future if I need to change anything. And, uh, yeah, that all went on relatively well, and the all thread sort of going through it held it all straight while it cured. I also made this little lanyard to go on the uh, foredeck um, sort of bonnet, just so if my uh, Gorilla Tape fails, uh, at least the foredeck will be attached to the boat still. So here I uh, finally got my real 6mm stainless uh, push rods, so then I was able to fit everything properly. Uh, this is the follower for the bugs cam uh, going on, that's like a genuine follower that uh, I got from Avalon Sales in Perth. And uh, it's obviously a little bit hard to wind on, but with my $11 vise, uh, I quickly got the job done using an arm key as a lever. Uh, I put some tap gel in there just to kind of lubricate stuff. Uh, I really tried with this boat to make sure that everything's going to come apart in the future. Uh, rather than end up in a corroded mess. I know you just saw me put nickel plated eyelets in but on the stuff that like matters like this uh, I've yeah, tried to prevent corrosion and stuff wherever I can. Um, the push rods weren't quite the right length so I uh, found this hacksaw hanging on the wall and uh, trimmed them a bit.
once all the uh, push rods were fitted and uh, everything was pinned in place, I was able to use the second cheapest socket kit from Bunnings to uh, do up the bolts and uh, fasten those levers down. So you'll remember in the, uh, one of the earlier episodes where I was sort of just sussing out what was going to be involved in this project. Uh, I tipped the boat over up against the wall of the garage and I found out that uh, the foil is quite low in the case in this boat and uh, yeah, the sort of my current fork arrangement for the bell crank wasn't going to fit since the bell crank on this is one to one and sits a little bit lower. Uh, so I finally got around to yeah, grinding that off as like the last job before I put the foil in. And then uh, this was about 11.30 at night and I finally got it working. And you can just see it just worked, like no, hardly any friction. Um, yeah, it was such a relief. Like the camera went flat about here, but this was almost midnight and yeah, I was just stoked that it worked. So if you liked the video, please like and subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, next time I'll make a 48 to 1 bang with the boom tied to the garage roof. And then we'll uh, get the rig up uh, again in the middle of the night on the street and uh, yeah, start getting this thing ready to sail.